from the previous discussion on the types of proportions, check out examples of each starting with compound proportion. Welcome to Mathematics of Engineering. video, examples for compound proportion are solved using the equations presented in the previous video. The first example states, in a road construction, 200 men working 10 hours a day can finish the project in 27 days. How many men must be employed to complete the job in 15 days if they work longer at 12 hours a day? There are three quantities in two different cases. The quantities are the days, the extent of hours, and the number of men. In the current case, 200 men work for 10 hours each day and finish a project in 27 days. The proposed case would require a certain number of men to work for 12 hours and they should finish a similar project in 15 days. Let's analyze the relationships to know which proportion exists. Comparing hours and days, shorter hours of a day's work will mean more days to finish the project. So this relationship is inverse proportion. Now comparing men and days. We can imagine that more men working will finish the project faster or lesser number of days will be consumed. This is another inverse proportion. With two inverse relationships, the problem asks for case 4 equation, where we take the product of A, B, and C, then equate it with the product of D, E, and F. Plug in the given values and get 27 times 10 with 200 as equal to 15 times 12x. So x is solved as 300 men. Another way to solve compound proportion is using the arrow method. For this solution, it will be easier to determine the relationships when the quantity with an unknown is placed at the center. The next is to place the arrows. Focusing on the number of men, it is just right to identify that the more men working, there will be lesser days to finish the project. So as the number of men goes up, the number of days goes down. This is an inverse proportion. Next is to compare men and hours. More men working will be requiring lesser hours to finish the job. So this is another inverse proportion. The next step is to write the equation. The ratio with the unknown will be isolated and it would be equated with the product of the two known quantities. But how to write the numerator and denominator depends on the arrow. The ratio starts from the arrow's tail to its head. So for the number of men, the ratio to be taken is x over 200. This is equated by the number of days from tail to head, 27 over 15, multiplied by the number of hours, 10 over 12. With the equation already completed, we get x as 27 times 10 by 200 over 15 times 12, simplified as 300 men. The second example discusses a cement factory which can pack 600 cement bags in 9 days by using 20 machines. The question is how many bags can be made in 12 days by just 18 machines. Categorize each element under machines, days, and cement bags. The first case is 20 machines work for 9 days to complete 600 bags. The question lies with the number of bags produced by 18 machines working for 12 days. Analyze the scenario, comparing machines and cement bags. 
more machines functioning produce more cement bags. This is a direct proportion. Next is to compare the number of days with the produced cement bags. More days of work creates more number of cement bags, another direct proportion. With both relationships as direct, we use case 1 equation of A times B over C as equal to D times E over F. Place the values in the equation to have 20 times 9 over 600 as equal to 18 times 12 over X. So X is then solved as 18 times 12 times 600 over 20 times 9. That would give X as 720 bags. Solving the same problem using the arrow method, we place the incomplete quantity at the middle of the table, then analyze the trends. First is between machines and cement bags. The lesser machines working can yield lesser bags of cement, so that is a direct proportion. Next is to compare days and cement bags. That is, lesser days of manufacturing will result to lesser bags of cement produced, another direct proportion. Thus, the equation becomes 600 over x to start with the incomplete quantity, then equate this with the other two quantities. Those are 9 over 12 for the number of days, then multiplied by 20 over 18 for the number of machines. x is then solved as 600 times 12 times 18 over the quantity of 9 times 20, making x as 720 bags. Since it is observed that the arrow method is easier to analyze without memorizing neither cases nor equations, we use it to solve for the other examples. The next example states that six printers in a library can print 100 books in four days. How many days will it take to print 50 books if only four of the printers are functional? Place all quantities in a table. Number of printers number of days, and number of books. Now we are ready to analyze trends. First, if more printers are working, the job will take lesser number of days, an inverse proportion. Next, when the days of work are extended, most likely that there will be more books printed, so the second relationship is direct proportion. Now that arrows have already been identified, we can generate the equation. From the incomplete ratio 4 over x is equal to 4 over 6 times 100 over 50. This makes x as 4 times 6 times 50 over 4 times 100, which makes x as 3 days. Example 4 discusses the ability of 35 workers to dig 5 cubic meters volume of earth in 5 hours. What would be the volume of earth 30 workers can dig in 7 hours? The quantities involved in the problem are number of workers, volume of earth dug, and number of hours. Analyze each quantity as more number of workers will dig more volume of earth. A direct proportion. Next, longer hours of work will also be yielding more volume of earth displaced, another direct proportion. Now generate the equation. x over 5 for the volume of earth is equated to 7 over 5 for the hours times 30 over 35 for the workers. x is then solved as 5 times 7 times 30 over 5 times 35, which gives x as 6 cubic meters. Example 5 states, if 4,200 men have sufficient food for 32 days at a rate of 12 hectogram per person, how many men may leave so that the same amount of food be sufficient for 45 days at a rate of 16 hectogram per person? The quantities are days, men, and food. Now analyze trends again. 
With more men eating, there will be lesser number of days for the food to be sufficient, an inverse proportion. The other can be analyzed with the fact that more men will deplete the food faster, meaning smaller proportion of food, an inverse proportion. So the equation to use is x over 4200 is equal to 32 over 42 for the days, then multiply 12 over 16 for the weight of the food. x is then solved as 32 times 12 by 4200 and divided by the quantity of 42 times 16, giving x as 2,400 men. The question asks for how many people should live to meet the condition of the proposed case. Thus is solved as 4200 minus 2400, so there are 1800 men who are to live.